If we are to see our way in those dark parts of our journey to follow Jesus, we must have a picture of the road ahead before we have to walk it. While we're in the light, we must understand the light and the road ahead because when darkness falls, all we'll have is the memory of what we saw before the crisis hit. Are you, if you're in the light today, if you're in a good time, a peaceful time, making the most of it? Because when darkness comes, what you do while you're in the light will determine whether you survive. You need to listen to somebody else if you want to make it through the dark. You cannot follow your instincts. You cannot follow your memory. You cannot follow your own designs. You will become hopelessly lost. If you trust yourself in the dark, you're done for. You must trust somebody who can see clearer than you, because in the dark, you have no line of sight on the truth. And the scriptures are this line of sight for us, and your Christian family can be that for you. We need other people to navigate the dark. We need the stories our parents told us. We need the stories the prophets and apostles have preserved for us. We need to remember. Because once we enter a crisis, our reason goes, our perspective goes, our instincts go, and God falls silent. And Jesus entered that moment when all of the certainties of his life were going to be called into question as he walked his way to the cross. Sometimes the future has to be navigated by the memory of others. And this is why we read and study the scriptures. It's why we pray. It's why we worship. It's why we do everything we do to the glory of God, no matter how mundane the task or how inglorious the responsibility. This is why we forgive those who sin against us. This is why we don't return evil for evil. The list could go on and on, but we do these things, sowing to the Spirit when we're in the light, because when the darkness comes, we must be fully nourished. We will starve in the wilderness if we've not brought enough food with us. Some of you today are in the light, and the word I have for you is this. We must make hay while the sun shines. Have you heard that saying? If you are in the light and God is speaking to you and you hear his voice and you feel his conviction and you're beginning to respond, these are the years of plenty to allude to the story of Joseph. This is when the fruit hangs, hangs low. The crops are coming in. Eat fully. Do not squander this time because the days of darkness are ahead and you will only survive them if you have invested in the days of plenty the way that you should. Others of us are already too late for that. We're in the wilderness. It's time to remember what God has said. It's time to go back to the scriptures and remember what God has done. It's time to recollect the stories of your family. If your parents are still alive and you don't know any of those stories, it's time to call and say, Dad, Mom, I'm going through a tough time. Did you ever face anything like this? How did you get through this with your faith intact? Ask them to tell you their stories. In Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, we find the following recollection. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Select twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them. Take twelve stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood. Carry them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the twelve men from the Israelites whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, What do those stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. Look for the stones. Because if you've tried to muscle your way through with your own faith, you will lose it. You will need a community when you're lost in the dark. There's a question I often ask older Christians. Some of you are old enough to remember the 1980s and the 1990s. Those decades saw a boom in evangelical Christianity. Mega churches started to arise. Parachurch ministries like Promise Keepers started to pop up with tens of thousands of men coming together worshiping God. Everybody thought better days were ahead. If you knew the darkness that we are now living in was coming, how would you have spent the 80s and 90s differently? Would you have spent it at basketball games? Would you have spent it on the things you spent your money on and your time on? How would you have prepared for the season in which we're in? It seems clear to me that churches wasted their money and their time in those two decades because we were unprepared for the darkness that has fallen. What would you have done differently? If you're in the light now and God is feeding you now, and you can hear his voice, 
How can you invest today so that when the darkness comes, you'll be ready? What time is it? Is it time to eat? Or is it time to remember? If you're in the dark, it's time to remember. If you're in the light, it's time to eat. Pass on your stories. Share with your children what God has done. Invest in the Word of God while it is there for you to eat and while it makes sense. Read it until your eyes bleed, because a day is coming when you will not make sense of anything you read, and you'll wish that you read it when you could have. This is the story of life. We can't live in the past. We always are looking to the future, always thinking about what is needed for the future. But if your future is in the dark, then it's time to remember what God has done. That's why we sing the songs we do, and it's why we get together every week. This is a feeding for you. This is a remembrance. I've had plenty of people say, we don't hear testimonies anymore. The young people don't know what God's doing. And I've asked myself, how can that be? They have families, don't they? What do you mean that they don't hear what God's doing? You mean you're letting the church tell your story? Why aren't you telling your story? No Christian child should not know what God is doing. That's the fault of their parents, if that's true. We want to do it here, too but you have to start it at home. We can do nothing in church that you neglect in your home. If the only Bible study your children have is at Sunday school, you're failing them as parents. If the only time your children pray are at these altars in a worship service, you're failing your children as parents. I don't say that judgmentally. I speak to myself too. My kids can testify that we rarely will sit down and read the Bible together and discuss it. We usually just talk about the Bible, and that's a failure on our part. This is not a judgment aimed only at you. We all know the pressures of life, but we must share what God is doing. We must study the scriptures together to invest while we can hear, because when the days of trial come and so many people lose their faith, it will be because they did not prepare when they could have. So God is telling us, you already see the darkness falling in your culture. You have already seen the signs. All the wickedness is already lined up. Dark days are ahead for the church. You know this, right? dark days are ahead. Some might say they're already here, but they're not here yet. We're not oppressed. I can preach like this without any problem. There's nobody coming in here to drag me off because I preach the scriptures. Not yet. We're still in the light. It's getting dimmer. We can see twilight coming, but we're still in the light. These are still good days for the church. We have time to invest in the scriptures, to pray before God, to share our stories, to invest in the life of our kids. But do not be deceived. Do not waste the time, because we are at twilight, and the darkness will come. It will come. It comes on every generation at some point. It is coming. We must be ready for it. And we want our children to survive it. I want you to survive it. When the darkness falls and persecution comes, if it does, and the silence of God becomes deafening and the majority of Christians believe maybe there is no God, or if there is, he doesn't care about us, when that spirit falls on the church, we will all be lost unless we have invested in the years of plenty. You are in the years of plenty. We're at the tail end of it, but it's still here. If there were seven years of robust plenty in Joseph's story, we're at year six and a half, but the crops are still coming in. How will you invest for the years to come? How will you invest in your children? There's a time in which you can invest in anything. When times are good and you're in the middle of the plenty, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can make your students athletes and spend everything on that pursuit. You can make them musicians or tell them that they can be anything they want. You can tell them to study law or medicine. You can invest in the world. You can do that when you're in the middle of the years of plenty. But when the years of famine come, they will starve because they have no spiritual food. And so when you know the years of plenty are coming to an end, things have to change. And that's what I've been preaching about. It's too late in the day to invest the way we always have. We have to invest differently. We're not going to try and save the building first. We're not going to try and invest in things. We're going to try and invest in our spiritual selves first. Because when all the buildings fall, you need to survive. That's where we're investing. And you need to make those choices as a family. And if you don't, you will let the future down in your own children. That's what I'm challenging you with. It's a different day. We have to know what time it is. Jesus knew when he was dazed from crucifixion. Anyone with eyes to see knows that we are this close to devastation. It's time to invest. It's time to remember. 
It's time to share the stories. It's time to read the scriptures. It's time to pray for our children. And it's time to absorb ourselves in the things of God, because days of famine are coming, and all the things you can easily participate in now will be taken from you. And it will be hard maybe even to find another person to speak about the Bible with. When those days come, you will wish you had invested better. And I think God has given us forewarning. So it's time.